A Treatise on the Astrolabe by Geoffrey Chaucer Geoffrey Chaucer Geoffrey Chaucer, English poet, author, and civil servant was born in London most likely in the early 1340s. The first of the Chaucer life records appears in 1357. He studied law from the Inner Temple. He worked as a courtier, diplomat, and civil servant for King Edward III from 1389 to 1391. Traveled to France, Spain, Picardy, and Flanders. His first major work was the Book of the Duchess, an elegy for Blanche of Lancaster who died in 1368. He is often considered to be the source of the English vernacular tradition. He has been called the father of English literature or alternatively as father of English poetry. Died on October 25, 1400 and was buried in Westminster Abbey. A Treatise on the Astrolabe Most probably published in the year 1326. Can be considered as the first example of technical writing in English language. Describes the form and use of the astrolabe, an ancient astronomical instrument. Addressed to a ten-year-old boy, little Louis his son or a child who is close to him. Studied as a clue to Chaucer's astronomical and astrological allusions in the Canterbury Tales. Summary The astrolabe is a sophisticated instrument used to determine the date, time, position of stars, passage of the zodiac, tides and basic surveying. Addressed to a ten-year-old boy Louis the first part describes the parts of an astrolabe and how they fit together. Chaucer states that as he has recognized the willingness of the boy to learn about astrolabe he has given this treatise. He says that no one has the complete knowledge about the astrolabe and there are some errors in the astrolabe treatise he has seen. As the child is not familiar with Latin he has written this in simple English and often repeated the sentences. He has compiled from old astronomers and wrote in English. The first part presents the parts of the astrolabe to make Lewis to get familiar with the instrument. The second part teaches the practical uses of the facts indicated in the first part. The third part indicates various tables of longitudes and latitudes for setting the clock from the calendars of Reverend Clerks, Brother J. Sums and N. Len. The fourth part contains the theory to explain the movements of celestial bodies especially the motion of Moon. The fifth part is an introduction from the style of scholars towards the general theory of astrology. The description of the astrolabe is presented by Chaucer. It has a ring which can be put up in the thumb for measuring the height of things in its altitude. The ring goes through a kind of eyelet which is connected to the body of astrolabe to make it hang straight down. The back side of the astrolabe is divided into lines which is called south line and north line. The lines crossing there are the east and west lines. While putting the astrolabe in the thumb the east side is the right side and the west side is the left side. The border is divided into 90 degrees and is further divided into a scale of 5 degree sections and every degree represents 4 minutes of time. The names of the 12 signs are written below the circle of degrees and the sign is divided into 5 degree intervals. The degree of border represents 4 minutes whereas the degree of sign represents 60 minutes. The next circle has 365 divisions which is the circle of days. The next circle is the circle of months which were divided into various days at the pleasure of Julius Caesar and Caesar Augustus. Then the holy days are indicated and after that the scale is marked in the form of squares and has 12 points and divisions. The scale is called umbra versa from right angle and umbra recta from the bottom part. It also consists of a hole to receive the rays of the sun during the day and to determine the altitude of stars at night. There is a large pin which is considered to be the north pole of the astrolabe. The cavity side is divided into four quarters from east to west and north to south. Like the other side the cavity side is divided into 90 degrees quadrant which compose a total of 360 degrees. The border is divided into 23 capital letters and a cross which indicates the 24 hours of a day. The plate under the reedy is engraved with circles which is further divided into equinoctial circles which indicates the stars starting from Cancer, the greatest north declination of the Sunday. The circles of altitude called Almucanters are seen and the smallest circle is the zenith which is the exact pole of the horizon for every places. The curved lines called azimuths divide the horizon into 24 parts which helps to show directions and other results. Twelve divisions next to azimuths show the planetary hours. 
The Reedy is with a zodiac shaped like a net which can be rotated contains several fixed stars according to the latitudes and longitudes which were named at the edge. It is divided into 12 principal sections which indicates 12 signs. With a label shaped like the Alidade the equations on the border of the astrolabe can be calculated from Almirai. The Almirai is called the tooth of the Capricorn or the calculator. After giving the description of the astrolabe Chaucer states the uses of the astrolabe. It is used to find the sun's longitude for each day in its orbit which helps to determine the month and date. It is used to find the altitude of the sun and other celestial bodies. It is used to find the time of the day from the sunlight and stars. It is used to select time by the astronomers to get the horoscope of birth or to fix time to take decisions. It is used to find the position of the sun if it falls between two almucanters which helps to find the true time of day or night. It is used to find the two crepuscules named the daybreak or the end of the evening twilight. It is used to find the length of the day from sunrise to sunset. It is used to convert unequal hours to equal hours. It is used to find the length of the vulgar day from the morning twilight to the evening twilight. It is used to find out the unequal hours or the planetary hours. It is used to find the size of the equal hours. It is used to find the sun's noon altitude which is called the meridian altitude. It is used to find the degree of the sun for any day using the reedy. It is used to identify the days having the same length. It is used to find the mediation of any stars included in the astrolabe or the stars which are appearing. It is used to find the declination of any degree in the zodiac from the equator. It is used to find the latitude of a region or a pole. It is used to determine the time of the signs. It is used to find the four directions, east, west, north, and south. It is used to find the latitude of the planets. It is used to find the point in the horizon where the sun rises. It is used to find the directions of the sun and the moon. It is used to find the latitude of the sun and all the planets in the universe even if the longitude is not seen at that time. It is used to locate the houses and the meridian line of any location by connecting the longitudes and latitudes. It is used to find the degree of the zodiac where any planet rises on the horizon, regardless of whether its latitude is north or south. The treatise is considered to be the first technical writings in English. The treatise was helpful to the students who studied the clues of astronomical and astrological allusions in Chaucer's The Canterbury Tales. For more videos, like, share, subscribe. Thank you.